Hey folks, welcome to a special edition of Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin, and we're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. Tanil Dashwood gave an update on her contract status with Impact Wrestling, and she has told Fightful Select that she is under exclusive contract right now with Impact Wrestling. So she's exclusive to Impact Wrestling, uh, although she wouldn't say how long the deal is. But that's great news. That's great news. They uh, they went after a big name, and they, they signed the big name to Neil Dashwood. And uh, she says she plans on sticking with Impact as long as she's happy there. And uh, she said she looked at all her options, and she decided that Impact Wrestling uh, was the best fit, and she decided to stick with the company, which, again, great news, great news. See, people want to come to Impact Wrestling. There, There's talent out there uh, that, that see the potential in Impact Wrestling, see see all the great stuff that they're doing right now, and they they want to be there. So Tanil Dashwood, exclusive contract with Impact Wrestling. I'm just you know, I, I one thing though though she said she plans to stick with the company as long as she's happy there, um, and she didn't really specify how long the contract is. So I, it could be a exclusive three month deal, six month deal. Um, normally their their standard deals are two to three years. So I'm I'm guessing it's it's um. It's a two to three year deal. Uh, so I'm not sure why she wasn't able to uh, indicate how long the deal was for. Uh, but I'm, I'm guessing it's a two or three year deal. Uh, she made her return recently after being on hiatus. We haven't hadn't seen her for a while because of the pandemic. And uh, she um, went right after uh, Diana Perrazzo. And uh, she made it clear that uh, she wanted the uh, knockouts title. So it's, it's safe to say that now that she's under exclusive contract, with Impact Wrestling, that she will be the the next challenger in line for whoever wins between Diona Perrazzo and Kylie Ray at Battle for Glory. Uh, I, I like what they're doing now. I like uh, her photographer Caleb Conley uh, is now in. Uh, they they formed a team. Uh, I, that has a lot of potential. I'm I'm very interested to see where that goes, and I'm excited. I'm excited. They uh, they locked up. Speaking of signing individuals, I actually have an update now. On Diona Perrazzo, I have an update on Diona Perrazzo. Um, if you listen to my last podcast, I had mentioned that I had questioned a recent tweet by Diona Perrazzo asking if um, she she was holding up the Impact Wrestling title, um, and she she uh, tweeted prophecy fulfilled. And this was on um, I think it was September. What was the date that she? Made that, I think it was September 17th. I mean, she had the, had the title for a while, but on September 17th, she's holding on the belt, and she said, Prophecy Fulfilled, uh, which made me think that maybe, just maybe, what she was for, referring to is that she had signed a that contract that was offered to her. <clears throat> but um, uh, I asked her about that. I said, uh, does that mean you have signed a full-time contract with Impact Wrestling? And she actually responded, as I was recording the last podcast, she responded, no, it means that I'm the Knockouts uh, champion. Is uh, but I find it kind of strange because she's been the knockouts champion for quite some time. So why on September seventeenth does she post, or does she tweet, you know, prophecy fulfilled? So and and somebody had actually uh, on Instagram uh, she was taking a uh, Q and A on Instagram. Somebody had asked her. They said, "Are you considering signing a long term deal with Impact Wrestling?" And her response was, "I'd love to make it permanent." So the interest is there. And this was recent. This was like last week. She said, I would love to make it permanent. So she was offered that contract. Or, yeah, this was last week. I think this this this, this Instagram uh, Q&A was before she was offered the contract. But nonetheless, she said, I'd love to make it permanent. So she's the, the, the interest is there. And I, I will fully expect her. I fully expect her to sign that full-time contract. I know it's a two-year deal and incentive-laden um, contract. I, I expect her to sign it. I think next with within a week we're going to see the announcement that she has signed the contract. I would very, I would be very, very, very disappointed if Diona Perrazzo did not sign that contract. So yeah, so Tennille Dashwood is aboard. Uh, exclusive contract and uh, Diona Perrazzo, you you got to be next. You got to be next. And uh, please, please, Diona Perrazzo, you got to be next. I actually asked her. I asked. I actually responded to her, to that tweet after she said, "Oh, I'm the Knockouts Champion." I said, "Well, I really hope you sign a, a long term deal with Impact Wrestling," which she hasn't answered. But that's okay. That's okay. She she doesn't need to answer. Again, I I I fully expect. 
I fully expect her to sign that contract. I mean, Impact Wrestling, she loves Impact Wrestling. She even said herself she'd love to make it permanent. So, Scott Demore, Don Callis, you know, don't, don't give up. Don't give up on Deona. Make sure you, uh, make sure you wrap uh, Deona up for about uh, two or three years. All right, please. Okay, Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam just uh, recently did an interview with, uh, I just want to credit this article, with a pro wrestling junkies. And he says that he doesn't have the passion anymore when it comes to pro wrestling. And I'm going to skim down to this article. And uh, he says the only thing left for him to accomplish in professional wrestling is having a retirement match. He said that at this stage in his life and career, he just doesn't have the passion for the business anymore. And he admits that he's only in it for the money. Now, I know Rob Van Dam has the name. Rob Van Dam, he's been around for a long time. Uh, he's, I think, pushing 50. Is, is, is this the type of guy, the talent that you want on your roster? Someone who openly admits that they don't have the passion for professional wrestling anymore? That they're just in it for the money? What does that tell you? That means whenever he goes out there, is he going to give you 30%? Is he going to give you 25%? Is he going to, give, is he going to maybe uh, on a good day, maybe he'll give you 40%, 45%? You know, you, you don't want a guy, a guy like that on your roster. Okay, you brought him in. You know, like I said, he's got the name. You know, maybe he brings in ratings. Um, but if, if that's the attitude he has, then maybe find somebody else that has the passion for professional wrestling, find someone else who will give 120% every time they're in the ring. Get somebody who is happy to be in Impact Wrestling and is not just there for the money. Maybe maybe it's time for Impact Wrestling to do that. Maybe if Rob Van Dam wants his retirement match, if that's all he's in it for, give him his retirement match, make it against Tommy Dreamer, whoever. You know, the passion's not there anyway, right? So it's not even going to be a very good retirement match. I don't know, maybe bring Jerry Lynn back and they can have a well, one more go. <laughs> Rob Van Dam versus Jerry Lynn. But again, it doesn't matter because the passion's not there anymore for Rob Van Dam. So it's it's not going to be a very good retirement match. I was a little annoyed to read that. I mean, you're under contract with with Impact Wrestling and, and you openly admit that you just don't have the passion anymore. You know, then why did you sign the contract? Well, obviously for the money, of course. And they're probably paying him um, a pretty decent salary. So... But, um, yeah, if the passion is not there, maybe, the, you know, don't be selfish. You know, step away and let somebody else have that spot. Let somebody else have that spot. And, and Scott Demore, I, I really hope Scott Demore and Don Callis read that article on Pro Wrestling Junkies. And they see that and they decide to make a, a, a business decision that uh, will be beneficial to Impact Wrestling. And that's all I'm going to say on that. All right, so let's... Uh, one more quick thing. Uh, there was a really silly, silly comment made on Facebook, and it was brought to my attention uh, by Pat. Uh, now, Pat uh, is a friend of mine on Facebook, um, and uh, he brought this to my attention. He sent me the link, and I'm just going to read it because obviously people are, are a little confused on, on, on how professional wrestling works and uh, what goes on in a professional wrestling, uh, during a professional wrestling match. Uh, so this, this, this gentleman, and it was on an Impact Wrestling fan page, he writes, I don't understand Impact Wrestling wrestlers. A person jumps from inside of a ring to an opponent that is outside of the ring, and instead of ducking the opponent, they stand still or they will want to catch. Is this maybe the rules of Impact Wrestling? Yes, I, that was an actual post. Somebody questioning why... Why in an Impact Wrestling match, it's not just Impact Wrestling, it's, it's, it's every professional wrestling match. Why somebody diving to the outside of the ring, why the opponent, the opponent on the outside is not ducking? Why are they catching them? You know, this, 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 this silly, silly, silly comment is this guy doesn't understand that when there's a professional wrestling match, the job of a, of a professional wrestler is really not to hurt their opponent, they need to make it look like they're hurting their opponent, but their job is really to protect their opponent, make sure their opponent doesn't get injured because, you know, professional wrestling is not real. It's, it's, uh, it's a form of entertainment that has a predetermined ending, and the main job, like I said, is the professional wrestlers need to protect each other, to keep each other safe. 
so they could keep working, so they could go to the next town to the next match. That that's the whole concept of professional wrestling. You know, it might look like they're beating the hell out of each other when you think it's real, but it's not. They're protecting each other. And that's the whole concept. And for, for this guy to to actually question why don't they just duck, why are they catching their opponents? Quite frankly, because they don't want their opponents to land head first into concrete because that would injure their opponent. Obviously, and I'm sure a hundred percent, hundred percent of the people, maybe ninety nine percent of the people listening to me right now understands that, and they're probably thinking, "You don't need to explain that to me, Lewis." But um, for the one percent, I thought I'd explain it. You know, so the whole concept, the whole concept, of professional wrestling is the wrestlers need to protect themselves. So. There is just there. There are people out there that think professional wrestling is still real. And don't get me wrong; I'm not knocking it. Professional wrestling, you know, is the greatest form of entertainment that has ever existed, in my opinion. Been a fan for for a long time. Uh, that I'll be a fan until the day I die. And um, but you know, we 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 know what professional wrestling is, uh, and we know uh, what goes on in a professional wrestling ring. And again, the concept. The idea is for the wrestlers in the ring to protect each other, and that is that. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me today on this special edition of Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin, and until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.